Before leaving the house, you rinse off and change into a clean shirt. You're not about to meet new people coated in vinegar and death moths. If you'd have known you'd wind up having a walk all the way back to town, you probably would have just asked Tabitha to leave you at the bus stop, especially with how unhappy she seemed to see you. Then again, maybe it's the perfect time. It's really pretty out here. Finally, you made it back to town. The hauler, as that guy on the bus called it, has probably seen better days. It still has the feeling of an idyll idyllic country town, but its sidewalks are cracked, and many of the storefronts are boarded up, their windows dusty with age. A chill breeze sweeps down the lane, and you shudder, suddenly feeling as if you're peering into a grave. Donkey. Gretchen, come back! Quit bothering the strangers. Why do I declare? Who is this gorgeous stranger? And why does she smell of peanut butter? Oh, I haven't seen you around here before. The young woman is noticeably fluttered, uh, flustered by your appearance. It's a phenomenon that you, as a hot, are all too familiar with. I'm a hot? Oh yeah, I am hot. I forgot that I'm hot. <laughs> yeah, I'm like so hot. Sorry about Gretchen. She can be very slippery when she wants to be. Hope she didn't scare you. Hmm. to meet you, Gretchen. <laughs> she doesn't look very impressed. <laughs> it's nice to meet you, Gretchen. I'm Marbury Cheese. My oh my, I can't remember the last time I met a newcomer who was so wonderfully polite. It's a pleasure to make your acquaintance, Marbury Cheese. Huh, that's a funny way to introduce yourself. I'm Stella. It's not often I see a stranger face up in the holler. Every now and then there's a new crop of coal folks. But you don't look dusty enough for that. You aren't in town for the funeral, are you? The Scarlet funeral? Offer her your boiled peanuts. <laughs> that sounds very weird. <laughs> you hold out the dripping bag of peanuts. It's polite to offer food in new social situations. Oh, that's really kind of you to offer, but I couldn't take your food. You should hang on to those in case you get peckish. Anyways, pet the dog. You reach out and scratch, scratch Gretchen behind her ears. Her fur is soft and warm. She wheezes excitedly, digging her little nose into her palm and licking her hand. Oh my, you know all the right places. Oh, I'm so glad you two are getting along. Isn't she just the cutest? With how energetic she gets, you never know she's 17. What's it like to be 17, Gretchen? Whoa, what's it like to be 17, Gretchen? I feel as spry as I have ever been, believe it or not. Huh, I'm sure she'll tell you she's as spry as she's ever been. On point. I'm hoping she beats the current record holder and makes it to 19. Or better yet, 20. The more time we get together, the better, isn't that right, Gretch? I plan to be around much longer than that. I wouldn't dare to leave you all so lonesome, Stella. How about I introduce myself so you won't be so nervous? I'm Stella. Okay, I remember this part. The Scarlet Funeral? Yep. 
Yeah, I just got into town today. Wow, I didn't think there would be anyone else coming. Are you staying with Tabby? How is she holding up? Upon mention of your cousin, Gretchen mutters under her breath. One of these days, I'll get that Tabitha to pet me. I haven't seen her since Perlin passed, or for a, a while before that, now that I think about it. I'm sorry, did you say- oh, I'm sorry, did I hear you right? I can't imagine Tabitha ever going by something so bubbly. She did back when I knew her better. It's been a while. I hope she's okay. Why do you care? Is she always so? You know. Rough around the edges? Yep, that's tabby for you. I wouldn't take it too personally. I'm not sure what it says about her state of mind that she's still her same old grumpy self. It'll probably be good for her now that you're staying there, even though she probably never admitted. There's two people over there. Who's the other person? Are you two friends? I was probably closer than most people have gotten to being able to call her a friend. The school here is really small, so everyone had to at least get along with everyone else. She was a grade ahead of me, but everyone knew her, especially since she's a scarlet. We wound up bonding a bit when we were both in the school's production of A Midsummer Night's Dream. I was Puck and she was Mustard Seed. As you might have expected, she was more than a little prickly, but I managed to soften her up a bit in the end. to describe her. I feel like they're a bit too close. But then she graduated and that was that. I haven't seen that girl or her horrible little cat since I was middle-aged. Oh, tell me about it. Oh, before it slips my mind, if you're staying up in that spooky old mansion, you must have met the Frofro. How does that monster fare? Oh my gosh. We should have a coffee over there. There's so much I want to talk about that freaking that cat. Hmm. Yeah, I know. Like, it sounds like you and. Oh, wait. Not to animals. Ah, oh, Tabitha's cat. Yeah, unfortunately, I have met Frofro. She is so condescending. Wait, what? Are are you messing with me? You can't actually talk to my dog, right? Say nothing? You and Stella maintain silent- Okay, maybe that's not a good idea. Um, let me just go back. That is a joke. I cannot talk to animals. Yeah, of course. That'd be ridiculous. You and Stella maintain silent, awkward eye contact. Well, next time you see that devil, please send my regards. And do let her know that not only do I still draw breath, but that I very much still plan to outlive her. Oh wait, that's Gretchen talking. Well, next time you see that devil, please send my regards. And do let her know. That not only do I still draw breath, but that I very much still plan to outlive her. Oh, if you just got to town, you must be starving. I was just on my way to the diner for a coffee, and they've got amazing biscuits. My treat. Sure. Oh, there are people here. The pleasant aroma of greasy breakfast food hangs heavy in the air. In contrast with the empty, lifeless atmosphere of the family estate, the diner is filled with the comforting 
the end of human life. All of which grinds to a sudden halt as the patrons realize that a stranger has entered the establishment. Well, mm, this is a bit awkward, but hey everyone, I'm Mormon Cheese. Just in town for the funeral, nice to meet y'all. Hang on, let me just go back a little bit to see which... What are you looking at? Okay. Nice to meet y'all. The woman behind the counter beams back at you. See? The hot thing always works. Hello there, and welcome to the holler. You just let us know if you need anything, okay? You nod politely, giving a small wave as you and Stella slide into the nearest booth. Looks like you'll probably be the talk of the town for a while. It's not often folks around here meet many strangers. And with who you're related to, well, folks love their gossip, you know. Hey, Stella. I went ahead and fixed you up a coffee. They gracefully place a cup of specially brewed coffee in front of Stella. Oh, shocks. Thanks, Avery. And here's some bacon for the little lady. For me? For me? Gretchen sniffs the bacon and digs in. Anything for you, darling? Uh... Uh, better not ask about how much it is. Um, I probably shouldn't offer my peanuts, but order a biscuit and coffee. Could I have a biscuit and coffee, please? I heard they were really good. Best in the county. Every pours the fragrant brew into the empty mug in front of you. They linger after pouring your coffee, turning to you nervously. Oh, and I'm, uh, sorry for your loss. Before you have the chance to respond, they're gone. Glad you took my advice with the biscuit. You won't regret it. Anyways, the funeral's not till Sunday, right? That gives you quite a bit of time to slum around town. I'm trying to think if... There are any cool events going on this week. There's always the reading adventure at the library, which is supposed to be for the little kids, but I do it every month anyway. Oh, and I'm pretty sure Avery's throwing a party Saturday night, so that's a fun thing to look forward to. And there's the weekly Sunday potluck. That should be right after the funeral too, so it'll be a special occasion. What's a potluck? Uh. Is the potluck like a church thing? Would it be weird for me to come if I'm not a member? No, no, the Sunday thing is coincidental. It's actually hosted by the library. Um, not too many people go to church around here, if I'm being honest. That's a shame. I was hoping to go to a service while I was here. Huh, can't say I pegged you as the God-fearing type. It's not that folks around here aren't like that. They're just not fans of the local pastor. There's just something a little off about the guy. You'll get what I mean if you ever meet him. And unfortunately, you probably will. Anyways, those are all the those are all the big events I can think of. As for the day-to-day, -day, any idea how you want to kill time for the rest of the week? No clue. Honestly, I have no clue. Well, you're in luck, as you've happened to run into the person who knows all the best stuff to do around here and has limitless time to show you around. My boss is pretty forgiving. Oh, wait, you probably wouldn't get that joke since we don't know each other that well. I'm self-employed, so I'm my own boss. So I'm forgiving myself. Get it? No, please explain the joke. <laughs> yeah, I get it. Before Stella can finish, a very Avery returns, biscuit in tow. Is there nothing else coming 
for me? Gosh, if I had known that plate of bacon would be my main and only course, I would have waited before digging in. Here's your biscuit. Winnie says it's on the house. She sends her condolences. <laughs> Thanks, it looks great. Thanks, Avery, it looks great. You pick up the biscuit. It's delicate and fluffy. It nearly crumbles at your touch. Buttery warmth emanates from its surface. You take a bite. It melts in your mouth as if it was nothing but butter suspended into a thin matrix of dough. Truly, this is a perfect biscuit. I've had better. This is the best biscuit, biscuit I've ever had. But that's not saying much. This is the best bis biscuit you've ever had, but you're not too big on biscuits in general. Wait, actually, hang on, let me go back. Whoa. This is a really good biscuit. Wow. I'm so glad you like it. Avery lingers at the table for a moment. So, has Stella mentioned she's famous? Uh, ha ha. Oh, Avery, I'm not famous. Look, if you're not gonna get around, go around tooting your own horn, you know I'm gonna do it for you. Stella sighs. I'm a YouTuber. Oh, also that's what the self-employed thing is about. It's not a big deal. I mean, it pays the bills. But it's really just a passion project, you know? You're too modest, Stella. Your videos are really good. You should watch them sometime, more breaches. They're like the Discovery Channel, but with better research. Uh, no, I mean, what's YouTuber? I mean, what's YouTuber? Oh, haha. <laughs> you see, there's this website called YouTube. You can upload videos there that anyone in the world can watch. And that's what I do for a living. I go out into the woods at night and film myself hunting cryptids, which are like mythical creatures, like Bigfoot and Nessie. I think the best video to start with would be that river one. Not the lake, but you know, the controversial one. Oh yeah, the Katoba River Runner. I didn't expect much out of that footage at the time, but it wound up being my most popular video by far. So the River Runner is a cryptic that only that's only known from a single sighting. Two boys scouts Two boy scouts thought they saw something big and weird in the Katoba River and that's all I had to go on. But then I wound up catching this on camera. Stella pulls out her phone and shows you a clip of something in the river. Some folks said it was a beaver, but if that was the case, it'd be at least twice the size of any beaver I've seen. I also had people saying it was a dog or even a capybara that must have escaped from the local wildlife sanctuary. It was a mountain lion. I could smell its sting from miles away. Gretchen? <laughs> I'm still not sure what it was, and I'm the one who saw the thing with my two own eyes. Oh my gosh, so much to choose. Hmm. What is a cryptid? What's a cryptid? Oh, just a strange creature. Okay. Um, um... I'm still not sure what a crypto is. Just, oh, like fantasy animals. Mountain lion. What's a mountain lion? Oh my gosh, I have to Google everything. What's a mountain lion? Oh, just a normal lion. 
I... Yeah, it's totally a dog. Oh, wait, a beaver? Hold on. Oh, yeah, that's totally a dog. Or wait, is it a beaver? Hold on just a second there. What is that? Right? My comment section went nuts after this footage, and from there it spread to Twitter pretty fast. There were polls for days. I even had actual experts weighing in. It was all a really cool experience. And it meant the video did some pretty great numbers. Personally, I'm a fan of the capybara theory. Sure, it's not like any local sanctuaries were missing one, but there's always people keeping exotic animals as pets. Kind of like a sewer-getter type situation.